Ruby began identifying as male at 13 years old. Now 21, she'd been planning to have surgery to remove her breasts. But in May, she made the decision to come off testosterone and detransition to identify as female, her sex at birth. She doesn't want to be identified, so we've changed her name. I figured it would be better for me to try to deal with my gender dysphoria in a different way rather than um, permanently changing my body. How much support did you feel was out there for you when you came to this conclusion? I didn't feel like there was any support out there other than like a few friends online. Ruby now feels her eating disorder was more of a factor than she first realised in her gender dysphoria. None of the therapists that I spoke to um, brought that up. They didn't think that it was linked. Do you? I think so, yes, because it, they're both kind of based in how I feel about my body, so I've seen similarities between the two. Charlie Evans is forming a charity to support people in Ruby's position. After going public with her detransition story, she discovered an online community of 5,000 in a similar position, 30 people alone in her area of Newcastle. I was approached by a young woman um, with a beard and she hugged me and, and said, I'm a detransitioned woman as well, I've just stopped taking testosterone. Um, and after that, I felt like I had to do something. I'm hearing from like, hundreds of people, um, and I think some of the common characteristics are they tend to be around their mid-20s. Um, they're mostly female and mostly same-sex attracted, most are lesbians, um, and often autistic as well. The Tavistock and Portman NHS Trust told us the experience of regret described here is extremely rare. Their gender identity service for children in Leeds and London now has a record number of referrals. The clinics here and in London see 3,000% more patients than they did 10 years ago. Among girls, referrals are up more than 5,000%. There's no question this service is helping children who feel distressed in their own bodies. But the full impact of children making decisions about their gender at such young ages may not truly be clear until much later in their lives. At 21, it's had a positive outcome for Jamie and his mum. After testosterone and surgical treatment, he's far happier than the torment of his teenage years. It was kind of hell. Like, it, it's just not something you'd want to go through if you were trans. Like, like me, it's just, it's, it's awful. Like, everything that happens to you within that, that stage of puberty for a female, it's, for a trans man, it's awful. There's currently no data for how many in the trans community detransition, and to talk about it can be viewed as transphobic. But people like Ruby say more discussion is needed, as well as more options for people with gender dysphoria. Sally Lockwood, Sky News.